Hello friends, welcome back to the Canada Info Hub channel. My name is Wolo and I talk about immigrating to Canada and life in Canada. I enjoy talking about Canada because I live in Canada and I live in one of the coldest city in Canada, which is Winnipeg, also known as Winterpeg, Manitoba. How are you guys doing? I'm sure you're doing so well and this week has been um, so far so good. No bad news from the world media. Well, and I'll be talking about um, immigration strategies that people should start adopting and uh, based on something I read on LinkedIn. Yes, I read an article on LinkedIn by someone who said that uh, there are too many immigrants already in Canada and there are industries that are pushing for more immigrants whereas there are actually fewer high skilled jobs. Um, to accommodate this group of high-skilled immigrants. So his analysis was that the real estate industry, the banking and finance industry, these two industries are actually the ones driving immigration because for real estate, people want to sell houses, people want to build skyscrapers, and that's where they are making more money in collaboration with the banks as well giving out the loans to developers to develop this real estate so if there is no demand there won't be supply so there has to be demand and the demand comes from immigration so the more people coming into canada the more there's demand for real estate and the demand for real estate will result to more money being given to developers by the banks so once there is no demand um, it affects a lot of things and other aspects of the economy. But I agree to an extent with that um, analysis in the sense that real estate prices in some parts of Canada like Toronto and Vancouver, they slightly dropped but not to the extent of dropping so drastically. Um, the demand is still there because the population is still in Toronto and Vancouver. But the demand is not as much as it is supposed to be because of COVID-19. Now, when people come into Canada, some of them already have their money. They are just coming straight to buy their houses. Whereas, there are some group of people who do not have money. They have to you know, kind of save more money before they can put um, a down payment for a house. The more people come into Canada, the more people are requesting for rental properties. The more developers are building rental properties and more money being borrowed from the bank but when people are not coming into canada of course they can't build more rental properties and there are a lot of rental properties currently sitting in the toronto market sitting like sitting empty because they are looking for people to take up those properties so i agree to an extent with that and I also want to add that it is not only two industries that drive immigration in Canada. There are actually four industries that drive immigration in Canada and they are real estate I've mentioned before, the banking industry I've also mentioned, and then the third industry is the healthcare industry and then the fourth industry is the um, food industry. So these four industries are the industries driving immigration. I've already described the first two, I'll be talking about the last two. For the healthcare industry, we all know all over the world, healthcare is hot cake right now because of COVID-19. They need more healthcare professionals in the healthcare industry, especially those who have experiences working with elderly people. And um, yeah, so this is what I would chip in. Anybody who is a nurse watching this video, if you know you're a nurse watching this video, it is best for you to apply for jobs as personal support worker. If you apply for a job as a personal support worker, either under AIPP or just any random job search, if you apply for this job, you are likely to get a job offer. So if you know any nurse, please inform that person to apply for jobs as either a personal support worker or a continuing aid assistant in any of the AIPP provinces. And sometime this week, Quebec has also been considering granting permanent resident status to some of the asylum seekers who came into Canada and are working as personal support workers in the healthcare sector. So we all know healthcare is one occupation that is always, always in demand and healthcare will always drive immigration. And 
In addition to that, Nova Scotia also gave provincial nominations to only nurses. The same thing with Ontario, they gave provincial nominations to nurses. So if you are a nurse and you are in the express entry pool, please choose Nova Scotia and Ontario in your EE profile. It will help you gain provincial nominations. Even New Brunswick did um, an online recruitment for nurses. So if you are a nurse, please target these provinces I have mentioned, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick and Ontario. They are currently giving provincial nominations to nurses outside of Canada. That's an information I have just shared and please share the video to people who will need this information. Don't hold the video. Don't hold information. Share it to people who need it. Anyway, so um, the last industry that drives immigration is the food industry and of course every other aspect of um, the federal skilled workers program is currently on pause, especially for people outside Canada. It's been only for people inside Canada. But that is not stopping the agri-immigration pilots that launched. And I've talked about it over and over and over again before. This industry is ongoing. And if you're a very strategic person, for someone who is very strategic, if you know that your occupation is not in demand in any province and you don't mind doing any job just to come into Canada, it is better to apply for these agricultural jobs. You know, it doesn't cost anything to just send your resume to any of these agricultural jobs, especially if you know that your occupation is not in demand in any other province. The agri immigration pilot has started and is ongoing for the next three to four years. And you know that you are in the express entry pool, whiling away your time, your age is counting for you, you are losing points. You are not even making any headway in improving your comprehensive ranking scores. If you know that there are several factors that are against you getting an invitation to apply under express entry or a provincial nomination, there is no harm in trying to search for a job in the agricultural industry that does not even need most of these IELTS requirements. All you need is just a job. Once you get a job, you apply for a visa apply for a work permit and please based on my last video do not go searching for fake jobs yes please don't go searching for fake jobs ensure you use the appropriate websites i have given to you to search for jobs and just keep throwing your resumes you don't know which desperate employer would you know kind of look at your resume and say i want this person to come to canada and even the processing time for work permit has been fast tracked yeah, the processing time for work permit for people working in the agricultural industry because they are considered essential workers, the processing time has been fast-tracked for them. So if you know that there are a lot of factors against you, especially if you know you're a low-skilled person, it is best to start searching for jobs in the agricultural industry. And that is why I share this information for people to take advantage of these opportunities where the other opportunities are currently on hold. It is better to spread your tentacles. Do not limit yourself to say, oh, okay, I'm waiting for ITA whenever they are ready to um, resume federal skilled workers draw. Until then, maybe that's when I'm going to get an invitation to apply. Nobody knows if federal skilled workers draw is even going to continue in the next one month or in the next one year. Until the border opens, nobody knows. So instead of you waiting, why not take advantage of the ones that are giving work permits, the ones that just requires you searching for a job, you know? So these are the strategies I said I will talk about. Candidates should focus on these strategies that are currently available because immigration keeps changing. Seriously, immigration changes all the time. Tomorrow you wake up and Saskatchewan might say, okay, they are no longer giving nominations to people outside Canada. Tomorrow, Ontario will come up and say their own. Next, tomorrow, Manitoba will come up and say their own. So, a lot of other things like job loss is actually affecting immigration as well. So, all these things might be put into consideration by the time they decide on the way forward concerning immigration. And you do not want to get caught in the middle, um, waiting in the express entry pool for something, whereas other opportunities have presented themselves and you are not taking advantage of them. So this is my own opinion anyway. It's just my own opinion. Please do not quote me anywhere. Uh, because I just feel that 
when it comes to immigration, one has to be very strategic. And if I were to be in people's shoes outside Canada, looking for a way to come to Canada, and I know that there are a lot of factors that are against me, maybe I don't have a good language score, maybe I don't have a master's degree, and maybe my occupation is not even in demand in any province at all. The best option is to change strategy, except you want to come to Canada through schooling. And you know, of course, education itself is very expensive. So, and there is no guarantee that you might even get the visa, the study permit visa to even um, study in Canada. But other options are there. Like I talked about the nurses. So if you know you're a nurse, please start applying for jobs. Don't waste time. And if you need a Canadian standard resume, of course, I'll be leaving the link of the website. The lady now has a website. Go to the website and contact the lady from there. Anybody who needs a Canadian standard resume, please use the website. Don't send an email to me. Um, I'll, I'm trying to stop responding to emails. Please bear with me. I have so many projects lined up waiting for me um, in the next few months. Uh, so this is what I'm trying to say. If you know that the odds of immigrating are against you, you do not have a master's degree, your occupation is not in demand anywhere, you do not have good language scores, you do not even have the money to pay for um education when it comes to um studying in canada then please start searching for jobs in the agricultural industry that's the that's the only industry that is currently looking for workers right now the uh, agricultural industry and the healthcare industry these two industries are currently looking for workers and try as much as possible to take advantage of this present um opportunity instead of waiting for future opportunities that might no longer be there so this is the information I want to share and um, I hope it is useful to someone out there. I am a very strategic person. I look at um, things based on present circumstances. I start forecasting in the next one, two years, what's going to happen. If Canada says this, what's going to happen? What other options are available for me? So based on that, I, you know, make up my plans and start working towards them. So that's why I'm sharing this information to you and I hope you make good use of the information. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.